Hello and welcome back to Teacher Tom's Tutorials. Um, it is August now and it's, I, know, I realize it's been a while since I've uh, posted any new videos, but I am a real teacher and like many of you out there, real teachers take vacations in the summer and go to fun places and that's what I've been doing. But like I said, it is August now and it's time to get back into the class. But let's go with the vacation planning first, huh? Did you go somewhere fun? I know I did. I went to my favorite place. Algonquin Park not once but twice this summer and so I hope you have done some fun visiting maybe to that special beach or something like that. Anyway, um, as many of you are probably doing as well, you're at this stage of the game in the summer looking back on this past year in your classroom and trying to figure out well what lessons are they what it's time to get rid of those they're bad they're old um, what lessons are just fine the way they are and maybe what lessons are good but you needed to tweak them just a little bit so I was doing some reflecting and looking back upon this year myself and I think one of the biggest changes certainly the biggest change for me um, as a teacher this year was my um, foray into this field of screencasting which is what I'm doing right now um, but uh, I think it was April that I posted my first video onto YouTube called Getting Started with Edmodo and that was really the, the first lesson I, I did as a screencast and I made several more and posted them up there for my students and I was really really happy with the results um, it's kind of operating under the flip model, at least to, to a degree, but I think there's several advantages to uh, recording some of your lessons. You don't have to do all of them, but recording some of your lessons, and that's what my goal is today, is to kind of share those advantages with you and maybe kind of hook you in and, and try to get you to do some screencasting yourself. So anyway, um, there's a few obvious benefits, like you can, you know, get your students a little bit more engaged. I think they like seeing the videos, even though, I mean, I could just stand up here and, and give lessons each time myself. They sort of like seeing the videos. They like watching them on the computers. They like using the technology. Um, and it gives students a chance to reflect. Like if they if they didn't understand something that day, um, or if they wanted to review to it for a test, they can always go back and look at that video that you made. You know, and, and maybe that'll answer some of the questions that they had about a certain concept that you're trying to get across. I think one of the biggest advantages, and I, and I, I guess I kind of thought about this a little bit before I started screencasting, but until it it, it played out in front of me as a as a classroom teacher, um, I didn't really notice the tremendous advantage. But one of the neatest things about screencasting is you're keeping your students engaged even if they aren't in school that day. So if a student's sick, maybe they get at home and they'll jump on their iPad or they'll jump on their computer and they can see if you've recorded a lesson, what it is they're supposed to do that day and they can actually get the work done. My favorite case was um, I, I teach seventh grade social studies here in uh, Okemos, Michigan. That, that's right about there. Oops, right about there. Um, and I think I showed that on a globe in one of my previous lessons, but uh, being from Okemos, Michigan, I had one of my students traveled all the way across the continent um, by plane, by, he, he didn't use this plane, he used a real plane, but he went all the way out to Seattle, Washington, and he spent a whole month out there. And the student was able to keep pace. He logged on every single day to my um, Edmodo, which I'll talk about another time. Um, and he, because most of what I was doing was on video and posting him up there, he was able to keep up with the class's lessons every day. He interacted live in some cases, and he was able to come back to school after having missed a whole month of social studies, and he was not behind one day. So that was a huge advantage to recording my lessons, and some that might help you to, 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 to say, you know what, I can do this. I can jump in. I can do this. And again, that's my goal today is to show you how easy it is, how, and how quick it is to do, or not necessarily today, but with this, with this little series of lessons, which I'm going to throw at you. But um, you're going to need a couple of things, and I'm going to share with those those with you right now. Uh, if you've got a laptop or a desktop that has a built-in uh, video camera and uh, voice recorder, then you're good to go. You don't need to buy anything. Um, but you might want to upgrade sometime. You can get yourself a webcam. These can be found really cheap at Amazon or any other place. Oh, I can't. 
Um, same way, you might want to get yourself a headset with a boom mic. I think it does a little bit better job of recording um, directly and you don't get sort of some of the classroom noise. So you might want to invest in those and those are pretty cheap and you can you know, fork out some of your giant classroom budget that I'm sure you have like I do. Um, or you can ask your parent group for a little bit of support there, which is always a handy thing. So aside from a way to record your voice and a way to record your face if you want to do that, you're going to need some kind of software. The software I'm using right now is Camtasia Studio 8 by TechSmith. It's a great little company. Um, I'm actually going to show you a little bit in this video tutorial series about how to use Camtasia, but before that, we're going to use an even easier one, which might just entice you to jump in um, when you see just how quick and easy it is to use, and that is something called Snagit. Um, both Snagit and Camtasia are available from their website for free for at least a 30-day trial, and I highly recommend you go check those out. Um, but come back in a little bit and you'll see another video up here in which I try to get you to do screencasting using Snagit. Thanks for popping in. Get back on your vacationing. But time to reflect and make yourself a better teacher for next year. Thanks for jumping in.